Okay. <laughs> Welcome to this video about programming for FIRST Robotics. This is going to be a very short video just showing how to open up a new project and drive a robot. We're going to begin by creating a new project. You have to have Visual Studio Code installed. You should have gone through all of that uh, when you installed the 2019 or 2020 control system code for FIRST Robotics. That will be covered in a different series. So we're just going to assume that it's already set up. Once you're at Visual Studio Code, you're going to press Control-Shift-P. It's going to bring up a menu, and we're going to create a new project. We're going to select a project type using this button, and we're going to use a template. First Robotics provides some basic skeletons of code for different types of robot projects, and we're going to use those. And we're a Java team, so we're going to select Java. We're going to use a timed robot. There's a lot of different kinds of robots, and we could use others, but we've used timed, and that's what we're going to use right now. Get a get, we got to put the code somewhere, and I've prepared a place to put it. So we're going to put it in this folder right here. And I'm going to enter a project name, which is also going to be Differential Robot. Or Differential Drive. We have to select our team number. We're 247. That helps us download our code to our robot as opposed to, say, an Alliance member's robot. I'm going to check this box because that will help us down the line and we're going to generate the project. Okay, and we're going to open it in a new window. That means ignore the stuff from the last and start fresh. So that's what we're going to do. And here we are. Takes a moment to get up. Okay. To find the code, differential drive, that's the name of our project, that's over here. It, all of our source code files will be in the source folder, i.e. SRC, that stands for source. And it's under Java. We have two files here, main and robot. Main just has the basic startup code, doesn't have any details. And we really shouldn't touch this one. All of our work is going to be in the other one, robot.java. Real briefly, I want to go over what's in robot.java. Robot.java has the subroutines that the field management system is going to call during the course of a match. Each phase of the match, and the match itself, begins with an init call. So there's one that starts right as soon as you start the robot up. As soon as you turn it on, it's going to call this robot init function. And then it's going to start calling periodic functions once that's done. Robot periodic is going to be called every, I don't know, I think it's 100 milliseconds, a certain specific period. It's going to call that one every single time from the moment it starts up. Each phase of the competition also includes its own init. So if there's an autonomous phase, and there probably will be, it calls autonomous init first. And then throughout the rest of the autonomous phase, it'll cause autonomous periodic. Then during the teleoperated phase, it'll call teleop periodic. You can also put in teleop init. And it will call teleop init if there's a function defined for teleop init. What we're going to describe for driving the robot is how you set up variables and functions to drive the robot. We're going to talk about a differential drive robot. What is a differential drive robot? Well, it's one where the left side and the right side are controlled independently. They go at different speeds. That's where the differential comes in. If they travel at the same speed, your robot is going to go forward and backward. If they travel at different speeds, it's going to turn left or right based on the difference between the speeds. And that's where the differential drive comes in. And the easiest way to control these, not necessarily the best way, but the easiest way, is to have two joysticks. So when you move one joystick, 
that controls the left, and the other joystick controls the right. Simple enough, but how do you get the command from the joystick to the motor? First Robotics has provided something called the WPI Libraries. WPI stands for Worcester Polytechnic Institute, and it's a group of students and their professors who write software and make it available for FIRST Robotics students. Within that, there are objects associated with each kind of thing that we might throw on our robot, or at least commonly used things. And really, it covers almost everything that we're going to use. Things like, for example, joysticks and motors, and also accelerometers and gyroscopes. All sorts of things that might happen on the robot, they're all there, they have their own classes. So there's a class somewhere called a joystick, so I'm going to declare a joystick. How do I do that? Well, it's gonna be as part of this robot class. This timed robot is going to be the basis for everything we do. So robot is going to have within it some member variables. There's a class called joystick. So I'm going to declare a joystick and I'm going to call it left stick. You're probably immediately realizing there'll be another one called right stick. Well, that's a good idea. Because I said there are two joysticks, one for each side of the robot. Okay. Now you notice there's a red line under here. In Visual Studio Code, a red line means there's a compiler error that is sufficiently obvious that it knows that it can't possibly compile this code. So we better find out what that is. Fortunately, VS Code has some suggestions for us. I'm gonna click on that word joystick that is underlined. It tells me it can't be resolved to a type. By clicking on it, all of a sudden a little light bulb comes up. A little light bulb signifies ideas. It might have some idea on how to fix it. Well, it sees that under edu.wpi.first.wpi.lib.j for Java, there's something called a joystick, and it wonders, is that the one we mean? Let's import it. Ah, good. It went away. Now we can use joysticks. We're also going to use motors. Well, we don't control motors directly. We control them through motor controllers, and each motor controller is slightly different. We have talons, victors. These are the manufacturers of the controllers that we're using. And the truth is that a lot of the software is interchangeable, so I'm gonna pretend that we're gonna use talons. I'm just gonna declare a talon. I'm gonna hit the return bar too many times. Talon. Go left motor and right motor. And oh, look, we've got a little red line. Let's go to our light bulb and import Talon. Yep, that'll work. So that's the manufacturer of the motor controller. So we've got a, we're saying we've got a Talon motor controller. We could have had a Victor. We could have had a few other choices. In Robot Init, that's where we're actually going to do something with it. Right now, these aren't really variables yet. They're just a place where we can put something. The object itself doesn't exist, so if you tried to use it, you'd get a null pointer exception. That means actually call the constructor of the joystick class, and it takes one argument, and that's the port, of the place where the joystick is plugged in. They're all working by USB. So it tells us that it takes the port number as an argument. So the first port has the left stick. And the second port has the right stick.
Now, we also have these talons. That's, they, that refers to the port on the RoboRio where the PWM cable is plugged in to get its signal to the motor controller. And so we're going to instantiate that variable. Their ports start at zero. So we're going to call the constructor of each of those classes. So now our code knows about a joysticks, joysticks that are plugged into port 1 and port 2, and motors that are plugged into port 0 and port 1. OK. And we do that right as soon as we start up the robot, because there's no harm in doing that as soon as it's as soon as it executes that code, it's ready to create those things. But we're not going to use them for a while. We're just going to start them. However, while we're driving, we want to be able to use them. And the joystick controls occur during the tele-operated phase of the competition. So we're going to put it in tele -op periodic. Each direction that a control on a joystick can move is called an axis. And we can get the position of the control on that axis and use it to set the speed. The values of an axis can be 0 to 1 if there's only one direction of motion for that axis, or minus 1 to 1 if they can control forward and reverse directions. So how about if I do this? I know I want to deal with the left motor. OK, there it is. This automatic code completion is really handy, so it knows I'm, I'm dealing with the left motor. And then when I click a dot, It'll tell me lots of things I can do with that left motor. What I want to do is set. Set tells it the speed that I'm going. OK. And how fast do I want to go? Well, that really depends on where the joystick is, doesn't it? Let's see if I can get that speed. So I'm just going to say left stick. And then when I hit the dot here, it's going to tell me all the things I can do with a joystick. Now, you might think get axis is the right answer. It turns out it's not. It's actually get raw axis is the one that we want. That returns a value from minus 1 to 1. Get raw axis. And which one do we want? Well we happen to know that it's axis one. All right, we better do the same for the right motor. And so we're going to call the right stick. And it's also going to be axis one. So now what we're saying is set the speed of the motors based on whatever you're getting from the joystick. And that's it. OK, that's not really it. There's a lot more that you could do to make it drive a lot better and to write the code to make it easier to use. But that's enough to make the robot drive. How to make it drive better will have to wait for a future video.